Welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Budapest, capital city of Hungary. I hope everybody has had a good week so far, staying strong, and is looking forward to a good weekend. In this class, we are looking at an IELTS Task 2 essay, specifically focusing on how to write a strong essay and get those high band nine scores. We started this essay yesterday with our members. This is a members chat class. Of course, everybody is welcome to watch. And we will have an all chat class in about 90 minutes that will be speaking part two. And there's some of our members joining in. Hi, Pavan. Hi, Jainil. Hi, Abhishek. Hi, Begjan. Uh, good to see all of you. While we wait for a few more of your peers, uh, this lesson is brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Please visit us there. And for general IELTS, visit us at g-i-e-l-t-s-help.com. On both of our channels, we have, or both of our websites, we have loads and loads of uh, materials for you. This is our academic website here with the blue background. You can click that big red button to join. And for the general IELTS, it's this one here with a green background. You can click that big red button to join and get access to all of our videos, interactive courses, and exams. You can see lots more members joining in. Hi, Amir. Hi, Hassan. Hi, Khyber. Maksud. Dr. Krishna and Mahesh, welcome to the class. If anybody has questions, again, you can always reach me at adrian at aehelp dot com i welcome your inquiries and uh to get our books in hard copy you can always go to amazon and find ae helps academic IELTS. there will be two exam books six exams and ge helps general ielts balram sharma welcome to our group of members send me an email which is still here to get access to those exclusive videos. Welcome aboard. All right, everyone. So uh, let's get into today's task two, uh, focusing on the body paragraphs and the conclusion. Okay. All right. Uh, here we go. So um, IELTS task two writing. You should spend about 40 minutes on this task. Nowadays, food has become easier to prepare. Has this change improved the way people live? Give reasons for your answer using your own ideas and experience. That's very important here going into the body paragraphs. I think we did a fantastic job yesterday of planning. Uh, we realized that it's really important to focus on the question, the topic, the controlling idea, and to ask the right questions. In order to ask the right questions, you have to imagine that you are not only the writer, but also the reader who is posing this question uh, to begin with, right? Okay, uh, so we did a good job. We planned this out. We created uh, the thesis. We said the process of preparing meals has become significantly easier than before, and I believe this has led to a positive improvement for individuals as they are able to save more time and experience more cuisines. That's what I felt would be my uh, best argument and my two clear points uh, to get that high band nine. And then we got as far as the introductory paragraph. Now, I don't want to reveal my background just yet. I want you to share yours first, members. So the introductory paragraph does start with a hook. Um, the hook reads, preparing food is a challenge most people face on a daily basis. Uh, somebody wrote me an email or a, a, a comment the other day, and they said, what is the standard for IELTS? Is it to write a hook or not to write a hook? Uh, students, there is no such thing as an IELTS standard essay. Uh, that's really important. I wanted to uh, emphasize that for all of our viewers as well as members that there is no standard IELTS essay. The IELTS uh, essays follow the rules of English standard writing and there's standard rules for essays for persuasive, 
expository, narrative, and descriptive writing. And the IELTS only reflects or uses those rules which have been around for, oh, I don't know, probably hundreds of years for these types of essays. And the standard for persuasive and expository essays, and sometimes even descriptive essays, is to have a hook. Even some narratives will have that. So it's good to write a hook, okay? I don't care who tells you what. Essays in the IELTS that have a hook, a background, and a good thesis will do much better, okay? All right, so keep that in mind, okay? So there's no such thing as an IELTS standard or a standard that the IELTS people expect. That's a misconception that I think a lot of people are falsely advertising, okay? If you actually talk to uh, the people who create these exams, they'll say, well, there's no such thing as an IELTS standard essay. Okay, um, so anyway, that side note, um, important to keep in mind. Uh, here's my hook. Preparing food is a challenge most people face on a daily basis. I think uh, some other members came up with a few different hooks that were also definitely acceptable and in the high band range. Uh, and now we need to go and write the background. So what are we talking about and why is it important? That's the other a key element in the middle usually of your introduction that needs to be present. So what are you talking about? Let's make sure we're on the same page. Why are we discussing this, right? So uh, give me your background. Hopefully some of our members uh, wrote a couple sentences for the background to this essay. So we're talking about food preparation is easier nowadays. Uh, what is that? Okay, so Dr. Krishna says newer technology introduced to the culinary arts uh, with greater pace and lesser physical effort are able to create delicious, uh, delicious dishes from desired ingredients. Um, very good, Dr. Krishna. I think you're on the right path there. Absolutely. I like it. Uh, Rajveer says it is a process of slicing, chopping, blending, combining ingredients and using a gas stove to prepare desirable dishes. Okay, Rajveer, I think um, you're defining food preparation, which is fine. Uh, I would actually go one step further and define um, food preparation has become easier. That's what I would do. Okay. So let's see if somebody is uh, that specific for their background. Uh, Beck John says, in every household, at least one member of the family makes food once a day using different ingredients and modern kitchen appliances, which makes the process of cooking easier than in the past. Very good, Beck John. So members, uh, take a look at Beck John's background. I think it's the best one so far because it defines for the reader the concept of modern day cooking as an easier process. And that's what you're doing well, Beck Jun. And for that, you get a double thumbs up at the beginning of class. So Beck Jun says, in every household, at least one member of the family makes food once a day using different ingredients and modern kitchen appliances, which makes the process of cooking easier than in the past. This evolution has a major impact on individuals' health and society. Very good, Beck John. Health and society may, maybe uh, depends on what your thesis will be, but sure. So that's your importance. So Beck John, very nicely done. Thumbs up. Okay, good job. Hassan says reducing time and effort and meal preparation is becoming trendy in household kitchens nowadays. Um, okay, Hassan, I'm not sure if it's becoming trendy or if it's simply the development in society. So when it becomes trendy, it's kind of like, oh, it's popular. And I get what you're saying with that, Hassan, but I think it's a little bit awkward because I don't think it's just trendy. I think it's just the course of technological development. Okay. Abhishek says um, they want to enjoy a diverse range of foods with varying tastes. And for that, we have invented many new and complex recipes. They want to do it easily and swiftly with the help of modern tools and technology. OK, um, Abhishek, it's not bad. I think you have some good ideas there. Uh, be careful with what's called dangling pronouns in English. 
Um, the pronoun they in this case, it's a bit awkward. Uh, who do you mean by they? Try to be specific with your subject noun. Okay. All right. So uh, here we go. I'll reveal my full introduction now as well. And then uh, we'll get into writing some body paragraphs. So this is my introduction here, my full introduction. Uh, preparing food is a challenge most people face on a daily basis. Fortunately, modern day innovations like kitchen robots and the convenience of international food exports and supermarkets have made cooking at home much easier. Clearly, this is having a major impact on people's lives and eating behaviors. Okay, now if I want to create a little bit more parallel grammar here in this sentence, I can just take out the word behaviors because eating is a behavior. So always refining. This is having a major impact on people's lives and eating. Fine. Um, I genuinely believe this ease of preparing meals nowadays has led to a positive improvement for individuals as they are able to save more time and experience more cuisines every day. Again, notice the parallel grammar form in the points of the thesis, right? Save more time, experience more cuisines, okay? So parallel grammar, I know some of you know that some of you are still practicing that it's very important that you have parallel grammar when you're listing points okay all right now again so notice in my background um, i indicate the definition of what we're talking about so we're talking about food preparation becoming easier what does that mean in my mind as the writer becoming easier well it's easier because of technology kitchen robots or kitchen appliances Okay, there are synonyms. And convenience of international food exports and supermarkets, right? So uh, we have um, many more ingredients available to us now locally than in the past, which is definitely making it easier for us to prepare uh, foods quickly, right? And effortlessly. We talked about this uh, in the planning stage. So when we talked about planning, and we defined easier, we said it's not just the technology, but it's also the availability of foods and ingredients compared to before, okay? So there's my introduction. It's relatively short. I would say it's probably no more than about 50 words maximum, uh, and that's fine for an introduction. So now uh, we go on to body one, and clearly body one here um, is save more time. Now, when you have an essay that's dealing with a relative comparison where we're comparing the present, for example, to the past, it's a relative comparison, uh, it should be fairly straightforward to write the topic sentence for body one. So as many of you know, and some of you, maybe it's new information, uh, a body paragraph always starts with the topic sentence. And the topic sentence is a deeper, perhaps clearer definition of point one in your thesis. And this is why, uh, students, it's so important to write a direct thesis where you have clear points like save more time and experience more cuisines. Uh, because when you have a direct thesis, you know very clearly what you have to do for your topic sentence. If you don't, if you say, well, this essay will further explain why this has become an improvement, then well, you only start to think about your body paragraph one when you get to body paragraph one. And that usually makes for less effective thinking, less creative essays, and uh, lower band scores, right? So... Okay. And Kyber's asking, where did uh, my background come from? Um, my background um, came from uh, why is it easier? It came from the controlling idea, Kyber. Why is it easier? Uh, and how is it easier uh, today to create uh, meals at home? And we talked about kitchen robots and convenience of ingredients at local stores. And the rest of it came from visualization. Okay. 
So that's where it came from. Okay, uh, so let's write that topic sentence together. Um, so the first one is save more time. So uh, tell me, what does that mean to save more time? Give me a better definition of uh, what that means. Okay, so give me a nice full sentence that clearly defines for the reader what it means to save more time. Saving more time is quite subjective. So there's a lot of defining that you can do there. Okay. So Rajvir says, this advancement plays a significant role in human lives as people pre pr uh, prepare food for pleasure and nutrition. I think that was for your background, Rajvir, so that was good. Okay, I can tell that uh, that's your background information for the importance, which is good. Okay, Beck John says, preparing food in today's world requires a fraction of the time compared to three or four decades prior. Uh, yeah, Beck John, that's good. So preparing food today requires a fraction of the time is how we write it, Beck John. Okay, so um, preparing, I would say the same dishes. Let's have a close relative comparison. So preparing the same dishes today as a century i would do a little bit of a bigger time span here than three four decades i mean we've had technology around now uh, for a while so i would do a century right uh, when the question students doesn't say the relative time it just says nowadays food has become easier to prepare but the question doesn't say compared to when Right. And so in this case, I would jump back a fair bit. Like I would jump back to like 1920, a century before even 1920. We start to see some pretty good innovations uh, in food preparation, but definitely not like today. So I would jump an entire century back, John, not just three or four decades. OK, so preparing the same dishes today as a century ago requires a fraction of the time as it did back then. All right. Um, I used yours uh, back, John, because I wanted to show you that correct expression here. Okay. It's a fraction of the time. That's how you clearly express that. Okay. But that's a good, that's a good start. Definitely. That's a good open uh, for the for body one, for the topic sentence, okay? All right, Rajvir writes, people require less time to prepare food than a couple of decades before due to the use of the latest utensils and kitchen appliances. Again, Rajvir, I jump back further than a few decades. Uh, utensils, that, that brings the fork and knife to mind. That's a bit awkward. I think, Rajvir, you're already transitioning into um, the explanation, uh, maybe leave that separate so you can leave explaining why, uh, until after. Okay. Um, Haman says, uh, people require less time in making ingredients ready as it, uh, uh as red. Hmm. Okay. Let me try that Hamon, one more time. People require less time in making ingredients as ready condiments and spice mixes save time, it's ready to cook. Okay, Haman, too much detail too quickly. Okay, now make sure, students, that you're always paying attention to every word in the question and in your planning, right? So we're talking about improvement here. And remember your planning. So maybe I should have gone over the planning. I was hoping everybody was kind of keeping that in mind a little bit from yesterday or reviewing notes from yesterday. Uh, members, it's good to keep notes, by the way. Um, so the questions that we asked for the controlling idea, uh, remember, and we even reflected on what Abhishek said, there's um, what is easier food preparation better for people? So we use the word better here, and I said this was the best one, right? Um, and then uh, we asked it here again, why does this make people's lives better or worse, right? 
So you have to remember that because the question is asking, um, has this change improved the way people live? So you don't want to forget that. Okay. Those are the key elements that will separate your essay from a simple band six and push it to a band eight or a band nine. And you want to have that in your topic sentence. So preparing the same dishes today as a century ago requires a fraction of the time as it did back then, which leads to an overall improvement in life quality as time saved in the kitchen can be invested elsewhere. Okay. So that would be my full band nine topic sentence, keeping in mind not only the definition of how it's making life uh, or how it's saving more time than before, but also giving that deeper definition of um, why that's improving life. Does that make sense? So you really do have to keep a lot of elements in mind as an author, okay? Does that make sense, students? Give me a thumbs up if you're uh, following my flow here. So this would be my topic sentence for my band nine essay. Preparing the same dishes today as a century ago requires a fraction of the time as it did back then, which leads to an over overall improvement in life quality as time saved in the kitchen can be invested elsewhere. Okay. That most directly and effectively answers and argues for the response to the question. Okay. Yeah, so Himan says, always go back on track, right? That's absolutely right, Himan. So as a writer, your goal is to see the tracks. And anytime you're kind of swerving off, you have to get back on those tracks and go into more details. Okay, so now we want to give the explanation. So explain that. Um, why does this happen? And why is life better, right? So I'm giving you a couple of hints here, but this is the dialogue. So continue to have that dialogue. Continue to uh, see yourself as both the writer and the reader. So at this point, your reader is going, okay, well, can you tell me uh, why it takes a fraction of the time? And can you explain to me why that's better? So why can I invest time elsewhere? What do you mean? that I can enjoy life more. And of course, again, you're visualizing here. So this is where you want to explain this concept in the next step. And now keep in mind again, so the question has to basically be burned into your forethoughts throughout your writing, because remember this part of the question, give reasons for your answers using your own ideas and experience. So it's a very personal response here because it's the question is saying your answers using your own ideas and experience. So don't just generalize. Okay. We're definitely writing a first person essay here. So give me the explanation in this sense. I'm going to do the same and then we'll compare. Okay. All right. So
Oh, just give me a second. My camera seemed to have an issue there. I'll get you back. Uh, it'll give you a little bit of time to write here. Camera actually had an error there. So just give me one moment. I'm going to try to get us back here. I can already see Pooja's got it going on. All right. Yeah, it's pretty intense for these DSLRs to keep their eyes open for an hour nonstop. But anyway, here we go. Back we are. All right. Gives you a bit of time to catch up with this explanation anyhow, which is good. All right. Okay, so uh, let's see what you have. I see lots of explanations coming up now. That's fantastic. So here we go. Uh, Pooja says, dishes like roti, which took around an hour, are now done in seconds with a roti maker. In fact, breakfast options like uh, Maggie has substituted long breakfast recipes making it easier for the working class to manage time. Pooja, that's a great explanation. I love it. Okay, very good. Uh, Rajveer says, with the use of the latest kitchen appliances, such as pressure cookers, chopping machines, and microwave ovens, individuals can prepare food in half of the time, which it took a century back, and people can use that spare time for pursuing hobbies and learning new skills. Fantastic. Uh, Rajveer, that's a beautiful explanation. Very good. Uh, Charlie says, nowadays, thanks to technical advancements, many kitchen appliances exist like microwaves and blenders, which, did, which were not around 100 years ago. And these gadgets reduce cooking time significantly. And then it looks like you're going into an example, uh, Charlie, with the, like, I use microwave ovens to make pizza in just under five minutes. But it's good, Charlie, you're on the right track. Uh, Charlie, don't use contractions, okay? Hassan says, at present, kitchens are not only loaded with appliances that can help to reduce uh, food prep time by 30% and effort by 20%, but also they perform multiple functions at the same time. And within one gadget, people can cut, chop, slice, and boil as well. Uh, very good. Yeah, excellent. Okay. Beck John says, due to the ubiquity of different ingredients in grocery stores and the availability of various kitchen appliances, many individuals spend no more than an hour a day to cook a meal and invest more time into education and entertainment. Beck John, I would finish with. Uh, very good. Hamant says, modern... Uh, white goods have reduced the time required for uh, pre-cooking, like kneading dough and chopping vegetables. Appliances like choppers, slicers have given uh, more time to try new activities. Hemant, don't use ETC and don't use things, okay? Students, that's a side note, but please keep that in mind. In good writing, we don't use the word things and we don't use the word ETC. Okay, so I'll put that uh, in the notes here because I still see that too often. So, uh, note. And there's a simple logical reason for that. So note, in good writing, and of course, band nine is expert level writing. In good writing, um, authors do not use ETC or things as these words have zero value for the reader. 
and in fact uh, has the reader guessing. So don't use these. Okay. All right. Stay away from those. All right. Kyber says the time for food preparation has decreased dramatically because technology has simplified this process. People do not need to spend 60 minutes in order to cook and clean up dishes. Uh, good. Kyber, um, the first sentence is just a repeat of the topic sentence. Okay. Uh, Bisser is asking, what can we use instead of things, sir? Uh, good question, Bisser. Always use a more accurate noun. Instead of things. Okay, so uh, in um, Hamant's example, uh, the more accurate noun was activities. Okay. There's always a more accurate noun, Bisser, because things is just a cheap replacement for the better noun. If there isn't a better noun that you can use instead of things, which are very rare cases, uh, usually the word things is not needed. Okay. All right. So, but in most situations when students use the word things, they're just replacing a better noun like activities. Okay, there's always a better word. All right, I think I got a little bit off the handle in my explanation, and I actually think a couple of your explanations uh, were a bit better. I think Rajveer's was very good. Um, so this was my explanation. Today's mixing machines can create dough within 10 minutes, as were the same process took an hour of kneading by hand before the mid-1900s. Furthermore, baking that dough into a loaf of bread is achieved in just an hour with a convection oven as where it took at least three hours in a wood stove in years past. Uh, the saved hours can be uh, spent on playing games with children or learning a new skill like playing the piano. Okay, um, so now we need an example. Okay, and we need a real world example. Uh, and of course, you should use I in your example to show the first person voice because this essay is first person, so uh, use first person voice. I, my friend, okay? Uh, again, sometimes uh, people learn and students learn that, oh, you shouldn't use first person in the essay. That's not true. Uh, you can write a first person essay, especially when the question is very much asking first person. It says uh, use your own ideas and your own experiences. Well, of course, then you include I. Uh, so Abhishek says, for instance, before my mom used one hour to make Palak Panner, but due to the microwave, it hardly takes 20 minutes now, and she can spare 40 minutes learning new skills. What does she do, Abhishek? So be even more creative. So um, she's picked up uh, needlepoint, or she started playing video games to have more fun. So be creative, Abhishek. What's the, what is she doing in those 40 minutes? Maybe photography. Okay, more time with the family. Sure, she's reading to the children or so on. Okay, so be specific. Okay. All right. Uh, Kyber, I'm not exactly clear on your question. Maybe send me an email there. Hassan says, lately I'm busy with my work schedule and studying. Therefore, I need just a couple of minutes, approximately 10 in the kitchen to cook a delicious dish of noodles, egg, and butter. Very good. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, sure. Um, <clears throat> I know that my grandmother used to slave away in the kitchen for hours to put quality meals on the table, 
but my mother now does the same in just a couple hours a day aside from cooking she has time for hobbies like photography and planning picnics for the family. Okay. And then the connecting concluding sentence. My grandmother would agree that this is certainly an improvement. Okay. All right. So that fairly long body paragraph, uh, depending again on your speed and fluency of English, you might not need all of this information. I think I especially went into a little bit too much detail in the explanation. I could probably use just half that information and it would be just fine. I would still get a band nine, but you get the idea. Okay, you get the idea. So let's reread this body paragraph, make sure it makes sense, and then we'll go on to body paragraph two. So preparing the same dishes today as a century ago requires a fraction of the time as it did back then, which leads to an overall improvement in life quality as time saved in the kitchen can be invested elsewhere. Today's mixing machines can create dough within 10 minutes, as where the same process took an hour of kneading by hand before the mid-1900s. Furthermore, baking that dough into a loaf of bread is achieved in just an hour with a convection oven, as where it took at least three hours in a wood stove in years past. The saved hours can be spent on playing games with children and learning a new skill like playing the piano. I know that my grandmother used to slave away in the kitchen for hours to put quality meals on the table. But my mother now does the same in just a couple hours a day. Aside from cooking, she has time for hobbies like photography and planning picnics for the family. My grandmother would agree that this is certainly an improvement. Okay, so I'm making that connection, concluding, and then I'm going into body two. Now, body two, it's not rocket science. It's going to be about experiencing more cuisines. Okay, so again, easier, more cuisines, and an improvement. That's what you want to think about for your topic sentence. Okay, I want to keep rolling here. Hopefully, we can get to at least the end of body two. So for body two, think more cuisines. And keep writing, students. More cuisines, uh, easier plus improvement. So you want these key words to be in your mind as you're creating your topic sentence. Just a second, I'll get you back on screen here. My camera's having a bit of fun, but hey, that's giving you more time. I'm distracting you with my cute baby face picture of my daughter there. All right. So, once more, uh, more cuisines, easier improvement, that will equal your uh, topic sentence, your topic sentence, okay? So give me the topic sentence for body two. That's the goal right now, okay? And I'm going to look at some of these. I see that some of you wrote some examples, uh, which is great uh, for the previous um, body paragraph. That's fine. I think they look good for the most part. I kind of skim over them um, out of the corner of my eye. Uh, now I'd like you to create body paragraph two topic sentence, which is more cuisines, easier and improvement. That's your topic sentence. Okay. I'm going to give you a little bit of a head start here. Practice your writing fluency. Remember, find that balance, members, between speed accuracy. Speed accuracy, maximize the band scores, okay? 
Okay, uh, so Rajveer says, uh, people enjoy the luxury to try different dishes prepared worldwide with the use of modern technology and greater availability of ingredients. Um, yeah, and I would probably, Rajveer, start with furthermore here. Um, it has become simpler. to yeah okay so this is a very much a big plus addition uh, we use the conjunction or I shouldn't say conjunction the leading expression furthermore when the next idea that you're going to state is like not only a plus but it's an extra okay uh, Hassan says the availability of many ingredients minerals and vitamins uh, on the daily meal table has significantly improved human health. Um, okay, uh, members, careful here. More cuisines, easier improvement. Don't forget this word. It seems like some of you are forgetting this very important word, easier. So, Hassan, try again. Okay. Uh, Beck John says, compared to the past, today's individuals have a greater chance to eat and cook for a meals which are easier to buy and prepare. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So furthermore, it has become simpler to procure and prepare meals from around the world uh, thanks to the... wide availability of international ingredients that can be found at most local supermarkets. Okay. Something like that. Now, I know that's not true for all parts of the world, but it's arguably a lot more true than 100 years ago. So I'm sure some of our viewers are saying, well, yeah, sure, that might be true, especially in Canada, maybe in Hungary, uh, but it's still not true in some rural parts of uh, some parts of the world. But it's definitely more true than 100 years ago for most parts of the world. Okay. All right. So let's see what others have. Um, Pooja says, moreover, technological process has brought in an opportunity for us to be uh, acquainted with most cuisines of the world. In fact, even the ingredients are easily available than ever before. Very good, Pooja. So you're putting in the element of easier. That's so important here. Uh, Dr. Krishna says, instead of having monotonous meals at home, new cultures are invited by various cuisines due to higher availability of exotic ingredients or easier accessibility. That's the other uh, word combination that we can use here. Easier accessibility. Okay. Easier accessibility to ingredients. Okay. So this is what I wrote. Furthermore, it has become simpler to procure. Procure is another word for purchase or buy and prepare meals uh, from around the world thanks to the wide availability of international ingredients that can be found at most local supermarkets. Okay. So this not only, so now a little bit more maybe, this not only um, provides a broader palette of tastes at home, but also arguably more nutrition. Now, we don't want to go off topic here, right? So let's get into an explanation before we uh, start to go into ideas that are not highlighted in the introduction. Okay, so explanation. Um, about a hundred years ago,
local grocers offered foods that were grown in the region. But now, supermarkets offer ingredients from Asia, Europe, Africa, and the Americas, which make it possible for the cook to quickly create new dishes. Okay, something like that. All right, let's see what you have. Okay, so here we're on to the explanation. So you have to explain what do you mean that it's easier to make dishes from around the world, okay? Keep that in mind here, all right? Okay, let's see what you have for this explanation, hopefully. Something similar to what I have. Beckjohn says, since globalization is widespread, in any city of the world, people can find international restaurants and not only try their dishes. Um, yeah, let's not go into international restaurants, Beckjohn. Let's keep it international foods at home, uh, but also learn how to cook them with the help of gadgets. Uh, that's true. Yeah, the internet and recipes. Hamant says, since the, uh, since the ingredients uh, on one hand and the availability of preparation manuals, recipe books, uh, one can fulfill their desire to enjoy and relish global dishes which were, only, which were earlier only uh, seen on cook shows but not made at home. Yeah, okay, Hamant, I think you're going kind of in an interesting direction. I think a lot of us, including myself, we're being maybe a little bit too creative today. We don't need to be that imaginative for the IELTS exam. Uh, Rajveer says people can learn new foreign dishes through social media platforms like Facebook and YouTube can easily um, buy ingredients from local stores to prepare these dishes, which was impossible in <clears throat> the early 1900s. Not 1990s, Rajveer, 1900s. Dr. Krishna says, history denotes that British sailed all the way to India for herbs and spices, but now just to drive to the supermarket is sufficient. That's great, Dr. Krishna. I love that. That's beautiful. Take note of that, members. Dr. Krishna, Dr. Krishna's example is or explanation is very well said. So history denotes that British sailed all the way to India for herbs and spices, but now just to drive to the supermarket is sufficient. And everybody can get the healing properties of cordamom or other spices like curry, right? Absolutely. Okay. Very good. All right. Um, so uh, here's my explanation. About 100 years ago, local grocers offered foods that were grown in the region, but now supermarkets offer ingredients from Asia, Europe, Africa, and the Americas, which make it possible for the cook to quickly create new dishes from uh, recipes, from international recipes. Okay, uh, now let's get into the uh, example, okay, so we'll do an example here, and this should be fairly easy, okay, again, let's not be overly creative here, okay, so let's do an example for this. Um, in my family, we have different international food nights each week like Tuesday 
is Italian night, and Friday is French cuisine. This makes eating at home fun and exciting, as well as highly nutritious. Again, this is a clear benefit of the ease of preparing foods nowadays compared to before. Okay, so that if I really want to conclude that paragraph as well, we don't have to, but if I want to, okay? So that's my example. All right, let me read uh, my uh, paragraph again. Furthermore, it has become simpler to procure and prepare meals from around the world thanks to the wide availability of international inter ingredients that can be found at most local supermarkets. This not only provides a broader palette of tastes at home, but also arguably more nutrition. About 100 years ago, local grocers offered foods that were grown in the region, but now supermarkets offer ingredients from Asia, Europe, Africa, and the Americas, which make it possible for the cook to quickly create new dishes from international recipes. In my family, we have different international food nights each week, like Tuesday's Italian night, and Friday is French cuisine. This makes eating at home fun and exciting, as well as highly nutritious. Again, this is a clear benefit of the ease of preparing foods nowadays compared to before. Okay, that makes sense. Maybe it's a little bit wordy. After the class, I'll likely go over that, revise it a little bit, take out some unnecessary words, maybe shorten it up a bit. I'm confident I could write this much. <laughs> Rajvir says, I bet... This was simply not possible in my grandmother's time. And Rajvir, you're absolutely right. So Rajvir says, for instance, my mom prepared Mexican pizza in 30 minutes after watching a video on YouTube and pro pro procuring the required ingredients from a local store. I bet this was not possible in my grandmother's time. That's very good, Rajvir. It's an excellent example. Okay. Dr. Krishna says, I'm a bon vivant, and I love to take my taste buds on a tour, so on possible occasions, I try new dishes. For example, on my parents' anniversary, we prepared Mexican food at home, and Mexican food is delicious. Very good. Okay. All right, students, uh, I don't want to rush the conclusion, so I'll leave that to you. Uh, I will post this essay as well on our community board with a completed conclusion and maybe tidied up a bit. So that's what it looks like. That's what a band nine response would look like for this question. Of course, there are many ways to skin the cat as the saying goes. So there could be a lot of different essays that can get band nine, but that's certainly one of them. Uh, for all of our viewers, make sure to check us out at aehelp.com for academic IELTS help. We do have task one and task two uh, editing professional proofreading services on both of the websites. For general IELTS, check us out at gieltshelp.com. Uh, coming up in 30 minutes, I will host one more class today where everybody can join the chat and that will be uh, speaking part two, some cue card practice and strategy. I'm glad, Kyber, that you learned tons. You're very welcome, Hassan. Goodbye, Rajveer. Nice writing. Uh, great writing, Dr. Krishna, as well. Uh, and uh, I will hopefully see you shortly in 30 minutes. Bye for now. See you soon.